All right, this is the Honors Algebra 2 Precalculus. We are doing 4.5 in Algebra 2, which is Gaussian elimination. Uh, this is our second video in the series. So we're going to go ahead and do uh, an example E3 and a practice problem P3 using three variables so you get a little bit more practice at Gaussian elimination. So, uh, and then after this, we're going to talk about what some of the weird cases look like uh, if things don't really pan out the way you want. Okay, so let's go ahead and start by writing this as an augmented matrix. It is already lined up as long as you notice that there are some zeros, right? So 1, 1, 1, uh, colon 10, right? 2, 3, negative 1, colon 9. And then we've got a 0 for the x in the last one, 1, 2, and 14. Cool. Okay, so I want, I'm happy with this 1, I'm happy with this 0. So it makes sense that the first thing I'm going to do is target that 2. To that end, what I'm going to do, so I already have my row 1, row 2, and row 3, right? When I make my change, I'm going to leave row 1 alone. I'm going to leave row two or row 3 alone. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take row 2 and subtract double of row 1, right? So again, leaving row, sorry, that was a row 1. Uh, leaving row 1 alone, I have 1, 1, 1, 10, right? Leaving row 3 alone, I have 0, 1, 2, 14, right? And now I'm going to take row 2 and subtract double of row 1. So 2 minus 2 would give me a 0, which is the whole point. 3 minus 2 would give me a 1, which is also a convenient benefit. Negative 1 minus a 2 would give me a negative 3, right? And 9 minus a 20 would give me a negative 11. So now I have my new row 1, 2, and 3, and I have to decide what the next thing to target is. Well, I see that I really want a 1 here, which I have, so I could go ahead and target both of these ones. And if you want to do them in one step, that's fine, right? So if I choose to do that, I'm going to take my row 1, and I'm going to subtract row 2. I'm going to do the same thing with row 3 minus row 2, right? And I'm going to leave my row 2 alone. So what that's going to look like, row 2 is 0, 1, negative 3, negative 11. And that's still going to be my row 2 at the end, right? In row 1, I'm going to take row 1 minus row 2. So row 1 minus row 2 is still going to be a 1. 1 minus 1 will be the 0 that I was looking for, right? That was the whole goal. 1 minus a negative 3 is going to be a 4. And 10 minus a negative 11 is going to be a 21. Do the same thing uh, for row 3. Row 3 minus row 2, 0 minus 0 is 0. 1 minus 1 is 0, which was the whole thing I was going for, right? Uh, 2 minus a negative 3 is a 5. And 14 minus a negative 11 is a 25, right? And so now I have my new row 1 and my new row 3. So I look at row 3 and realize that this thing is all a multiple of 5. So the easiest thing I can do is do row 3 and divide it by 5, and then row 3 is pretty much going to be done, right? Uh, so I'm going to leave row 1 and row 2 alone. So row 1 is ze uh, 1, 0, 4, colon 21. Row 2 is 0, 1, negative 3, colon negative 11. And row 3 now, when I divide everybody by 5, is going to become 0, 0, 1, and 5, which means that I actually know right away that z is totally a 5, right? This right here tells me, oh, look, z is 5, right? Yay, z is 5. Okay, cool. So I now have this new row 1, new row 2, new row 3, right? So what do I want to target now? Well, looks to me like I want to target these two because I can use this one to knock those guys out. So if you want to do it in one step, that's fine. If you want to do it in two, that's also fine. So in, I'm going to do it in one step just because of space constraints, right? If I do this in one step, my row four, uh, row one rather, is going to need to be subtract, uh, subtract four of row three, right? I'm using row three. I want to do four minus four, so I use four of row three. Uh, my row two is going to be adding three of row three, right? Because it's a negative three and I want to add three. And I'm not going to change my row three at all, right? So my row three is going to stay the same. So row three is still zero, zero, one, colon five. And again, it's really just telling me z is five. When I go ahead and do my row one, right? Row one minus four of row three. So notice that row three is a bunch of zeros. So I get zero or one minus zero, zero minus zero. So these don't change, right? Which is by the way, the total point of using row three. And now I'm gonna do four minus a four. So that's that zero that I was looking for, right? And then 21 minus four times five. So that's gonna be a one, right? So that right there tells me that X is one, 
right? I'm gonna do the same thing with row two. Uh, again, these first two, because I'm subtracting row three, they don't change. So this is still a zero and a one. Now I have a negative three plus a three. Well, that's gonna be a zero, which was totally the whole point. And I'm gonna have a five, uh, sorry, a negative 11 plus three of row three. So it's negative 11 plus a 15, which is a four, right? So from this, I can conclude that X is one, Y is four, and Z is five. And again, this is a consistent independent system because I have a nice happy finite solution. So in our P3, you're gonna go ahead and try one just like this. Again, it's gonna have a decent number of steps. Um, if you got stuck on this, could you technically do this by making this matrix, uh, your matrix A, right? Could you technically have made this A and done this and made this matrix your B and then done A inverse times B just like we learned to do in 4.4? Um, in yes. So if you were really panicked, you could skip to the end. You just wouldn't get all this credit. So again, when I point out that on a test, I'm going to ask you to do this. I'm gonna give you a point for doing this. I'm gonna give you a point for getting the actual answer. You could do both of those things without doing all of these steps. In the middle, I give you a couple points. It's not gonna cost you a letter grade. It's not gonna be a big deal. Just try your best, but I want you to try to get the logic for how this works, okay? All right, so go ahead and try P3 without me. I'm gonna go ahead and do it uh, right now. So pause me if you don't want me to. So I go ahead and make my augmented matrix. Notice this one's a little tricky because the zero is in the middle of that bottom one. Okay, so uh, again, I have my row one, row two, row three. You can switch entire rows. Um, so far, we haven't run into a problem where that was useful. So I see that I've got this one and I like it. So I'm gonna use it to target these two values. Now, if you wanna do that in one step, fine. If you wanna do it in two steps, also fine. So row one is great the way it is because I, I wanna keep row one the same, right? So my row one is gonna be one, three, one, 10. Right, and that's my row one and I didn't change it. Okay, if you wanna do this in one step, you can. I'm gonna use this one to get rid of both the five and this one. So I could take row two minus five of row one and I could take row three minus row one, right? Um, the thing to notice here is that the, the value you wanna to try to use to eliminate stuff is the thing that should be the one in the final answer, right? These guys are all supposed to be ones in the final answer, right? This whole main diagonal is supposed to be ones in the final answer. So that's what I wanna try and use most of the time. I wanna get that one to be a one and then use it to eliminate other stuff. Okay, so that said, five of row two, uh, row two, sorry, plus five or minus five of row one would be a zero, right? That would be a five minus a five, which is totally the whole point. That was the thing we were going for, right? Negative six minus 15, right, is gonna be a negative 21, which is kind of ugly, but it is what it is. This is gonna be a one minus a five, so it's a negative four. And this is gonna be a four minus a 50. So that's gonna be a negative 46, which is kind of crazy, but the numbers will get smaller as we go. One minus one is a zero, right? Zero minus three is a negative three. Four minus one is a three, right? Uh, and seven minus the 10 is a negative three, right? So I now have my new row two and I have my new row three. So you don't have to do this. Um, there's a couple different ways to deal with this, um, but one option, right? One option, uh, so you normally, you'd be hoping that this is a one, but this whole equation, the second equation is not divisible by anything. So there's a couple different ways you can deal with it, right? Um, one way to deal with it is to divide this entire second equation by negative three, because it is all divisible by the same number, and then switch the rows. So I have a couple options, right? I think that's not a terrible plan, um, but it's up to you, right? So, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go for it and I'm gonna switch the rows. So I'm gonna leave my row one here. I'm gonna go ahead and switch this and make this row three and this row two. I'm gonna switch them, okay? So, and let's just make that a different color so that it's clear. The reason I'm doing that is because this one is a much easier row to deal with because everybody's a multiple of the same number, right? So I'm gonna leave my row one the same, right? Uh, I'm gonna move my row three here. And, and admittedly, some of you might choose in the same step to divide this row by negative three. Like, or, you know, that might be a, not a terrible plan. Uh, zero, negative 21, negative four, negative 46, right? So 
from here, this is my new R1, R2, R3, right? I'm gonna go ahead and make this guy the one I really want him to be, I guess, although there's a good argument that even though he's a negative three right now, negative three could easily be used to eliminate both of these numbers because they're both multiples of negative three. So if I wanted to use that negative three already to make a bunch of zeros, I could, right? If I take R1 and add it to R2, it's gonna cancel because they're both threes, one's negative, one's positive. If I take R3, uh, which is this guy, right? Um, and I subtract seven of R2, right? Cause I'd want a positive 21 here. That's also gonna be zero. So if you wanna do that, that's not a bad plan. So I didn't change my R2. Right, I didn't change my R2. R1 plus R2 just means add the two of them. So, so I'm gonna have one plus zero, which is one. Sorry, I should put that in red for you, one, right? Uh, three plus negative three, which is totally the zero that I was looking for, right? Uh, one plus three, which is a four, right? Um, well, that's weird. 10 and negative three is a seven. Well, that doesn't seem right, does it now? Because, uh, so this is, so, oh, I'm sorry, there's still a four there. Yep, it's fine, my bad, I didn't see the four. So it's not to say you're never gonna get fractions, but most of the time your final answer is not gonna be a fraction. It does happen, it happens on a couple of the homework problems, but most of the time I'm giving you things where they're gonna be fairly nice numbers. Okay, so let's do the other one. Uh, so R3 minus seven of R2. Well, R3 and R2 both have zeros here, so that's still gonna be a zero. Negative 21 minus a negative 21 is gonna be a zero, right? Which is the goal. This is gonna be a negative four, right? Minus a 21, that's gonna be a negative 25, which is crazy and kind of ugly, but it is what it is. And then this one is gonna be a negative 46. Sorry, it's a six, right? It'll be a negative 46, I'll write it over here, right? Uh, and then this is gonna end up being a plus 21, right? So that's a negative 25 and that makes it make a little more sense because now the 25s are gonna be easy to deal with. All right, so R1, R2, R3. Okay, I'd say that I'm gonna, in two steps, I'm gonna divide R2 by negative three and I'm gonna divide R3 by negative 25. I think that's the easiest plan to start. So we're gonna go, I'm gonna go ahead and do both of those. So I'm gonna do R2 divided by negative three because that's gonna get ones, right? And I'm gonna do R3 divided by a negative 25. I'm gonna leave R1 alone. And this has been a slightly different version. Keep in mind, you don't always have to go in the same direction that I'm going, right? So like sometimes you're gonna spot something or go in one direction that somebody else is gonna go in a different direction and they're both right and that's fine. So I have a zero. This is now a one, a negative one, and a one, right? This is now zero, zero, one, one. So right away, I now know that Z is one, right? That's what this last row tells me. This is my new row one, row two, row three. So what I wanna do now, last step, is to use this one to get rid of both of these guys. So I'm gonna do R1 minus four of R3. I'm gonna do R2 plus R3, and I'm gonna leave R3 alone because it was already done, right? So R1 minus four of R3. Well, these values aren't gonna change because R3 has a bunch of zeros at the beginning, right? But four minus four is gonna be zero, which was the whole point, right? And then seven minus four is gonna give me a three, right? R2 plus R3, right? I'm just gonna add the last two, right? So I'm gonna get zero, one, this is a zero, and this is a two. And then I already had this row. So it turns out that my X is three, my Y is two, and my Z is one, and that's my answer. So uh, again, just a basic idea of how this works. Um, on my assessment, generally I make you do one that is two by two, uh, like two variables, right? Uh, and one of these that is three variables like this, okay? Um, cool, so in the last video, we're gonna talk a little bit about a cool thing your calculator can do uh, with some of the weird cases in these situations.